Hello everyone and welcome to Bionadon's Mods. This is Otaku Showboat, and in this tutorial, we'll be going over the Iron Ore Processing Chain. This is the first tutorial video in this series, so if you enjoy it, don't forget to engage through commenting, liking, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell to help make this tutorial series visible higher up in search results. Also, if you aren't so inclined, you can go over to twitch.tv slash otakushowboat to leave a follow and turn on notifications to be reminded when I go live, as well as follow me on Twitter at otakushowboat and visit my website at otakushowboat.com where I will be posting companion blog posts to go along with these videos. As a disclaimer, Pyanodon's mods are in a constant state of flux, so I will not be focusing on numbers and ratios for machines and outputs and such as much, uh, because chances are the numbers will change at some point in the relatively near future, and any numbers I present will immediately become useless. Uh, for the purposes of this tutorial series, I am using the same mods that I am using for my playthrough on Twitch that is currently ongoing. The link to that page should be below this video. It is the stream schedule page on my website that has the full list of mods for my stream series, with a notable exception, that exception being that I have the Infinity mod installed on this particular map to help with visualizing the various ore processing chains. Also, when it comes to iron and copper in particular, and later on uranium, I do have the Realistic Ores mod installed, so if the ores look a little bit opposite of what they normally do in the game, that is because I have the Realistic Ores mod installed for this particular map. So, with that out of the way, let us begin the actual overview for iron. So as I zoom out a little bit, here we have the text plates mods mod in good glorious use here to show us everything involved along the entire chain for iron minus outside inputs and outside, well, byproducts. So minus the outside inputs and byproducts. So the, the simplified outline of the entire ore chain. In the early game, though, you are going to be limited to just this. In fact, at the very start of the game, you won't even have access to any splitters or undergrounds in the very, very early game. So what you'll end up having to do is have some, like, coal in and then ore in on a single line going up, but assuming you've made it to that point where you now have your splitters uh, and your undergrounds to get some fuel in along with the ore, the iron ore, this is the generally accepted standard uh, uh, smelting lane line, and this is going to get you 1.875 on the output of iron at this point in time. Just as a point of reference, I said I'm not going to focus on the numbers exactly, but just know that 15 per second in is currently set to 20 smelting stone fa uh, furnaces. And it will get you about 1.875 out. But we're not concerned with this because this is incredibly inefficient. This is incredibly inefficient, so once you're at red science, you're going to be focused here, right here on step one, which is crushing for processed ore. After crushing for processed ore, later on down the line, you will concern yourself with turning that processed ore into grade one, two, and three ore. 
and then converting that grade 2 and 3 into 1. So you get grade 1, 2, and 3, you then convert 3 to 2, and then all of your 2 into 1, and then all of your 1 in total down to iron ore dust. And then you take your iron ore dust and convert it into pulp 1 and iron slime, which at green science you will then convert the pulp one and the slime into unslimed iron, and you can make molten iron out of that, and you will be very, very, very happy uh, at this point in the game. This is the most important, I would say, step to get to right here, these, these two lines in the hydrocyclone and hydroclassifiers. Uh, this is the most important. You must get up to unslimed iron processing into molten iron via a basic oxygen furnace. See, unslimed iron, that's your second step here in the molten processing. Getting up to this point is incredibly important because it is a massive increase in efficiency over even making processed into molten. So over the previous step, which is processed or into molten. So that's rather important and what I want to point out. Also, once you do get up to blue science, if you get up to blue science, and are wanting to do the next major milestone, which is high-grade iron. High-grade iron is the next Major's Milestone, all the way down here. So from right up here, down to here, all of this stuff. Uh, it is rather complex. It has a lot of outside inputs that are not presented here, but I will get to shortly. In various other machines, other types of machines, but also, you will have to change your processing of Pulp 1. Instead of making your Pulp 1 into unslimed iron, you will want to make it into iron concentrate in a different machine called the jig. And the jig will require circuit twos. So this is definitely one that's like, you're not going to really be able to do this until you have the blue science anyway to uh, go up to high grade iron. So once you hit blue science, this is the new goal is to get up to high grade iron. And it is a another requisite increase in overall efficiency, but it does have a lot of outside inputs to get to this point, uh, and we will go over those. At utility science, yellow science, the very end, right before your space science at the end game, you will have access to reduction and centering at the same time. I highly suggest not, not doing reduced iron to molten, but doing centered iron to molten, and I will explain that once we get to it at the very end. So here is our overview. You have ore to processed, processed to grade 1, 2, and 3, grade 3 to 2, and 2 to 1, and 1 to dust. The dust gets converted into pulp and slime. The pulp can go into unslimed iron or iron concentrate. The slime can go into unslimed iron. Unslimed iron can go into pulp 2, pulp 2 into 3, 3 into 4, 4 into 5, 5 into 6, 6 into 7, and 2, and 7 into high grade iron. And then that iron concentrate that you can make out of pulp 1 can become iron dust concentrate and iron ore dust that gets fed back into pulp 1 and iron slime. Note that feedback. Iron dust concentrate can become pulp 7. And this is a more efficient process than taking the unslimed iron from pulp 1. one and then once you have high grade iron you can convert that into reduced and then reduced into centered at yellow science now as for how you're going to get your iron plates uh you will use foundries or furnace really at standard ore so stone furnaces and advanced foundries to make plates out of your ore it's the same general recipe at that slow speed but it also if you add hot air in an advanced foundry increase your efficiency by 50 percent so 
Instead of 1.875, you're now at 2.812 because hot air increases the output by about 50% most of the time in many of these early recipes converting ore into plates. You do have the option with the advanced foundry to also use processed ore to make plates directly without going the route of molten. Uh, I would not really suggest this unless you don't yet have the items that you need to do the molten recipes. Uh, also, iron oxide, I've noted here... I've just made note of this, that there is this recipe to turn iron oxide into plates. Generally speaking, you're not going to be doing this recipe to get iron unless you just want something to do with excess iron oxide. Iron oxide is the byproduct of many recipes in Pyanalon's mods, uh, but it is also required for many things, uh, such as pyrite, which is needed for solar panels, just as an example. Uh, so iron oxide, very important to make it, but in general you're going to make it out of plates, not make this into plates. So it's just going to note that here. And then molten in casting units. This recipe is identical across the board, making molten iron out of casting units. Now, the molten itself can be obtained at varying efficiencies through processed iron, again, unslimed iron, high-grade iron, reduced, and centered. I would always suggest doing the molten recipes in the early game uh, and to get there as quickly as possible. So, moving on from this, for further discussion, we've already talked about how you can add hot air in an advanced foundry. Hot air is obtained through stone bricks in, an, in a foundry going into a regenerative heat exchanger. You need four pressure pumps to make hot air. Four pressure pumps to make enough uh, pressured air to feed the hot air machine. The regenerative heat exchanger. And with a setup like this, if you use loaders, it makes it very simple because you can load one into the other, and you don't have to worry about backups or anything like that. It will use only what it needs. You can just shove a full stack of stone bricks into this, and this is self-sustaining. Just add power, and you never have to look at it again. So you can make hot air anywhere. Doesn't matter the exact location of this. It can go anywhere, at any outpost or whatever you want to uh, set up. So, once you get past the very early game, so that I consider this phase the very early game, once you want to graduate and start making a bit more iron for your input, this is based off of an input of a yellow belt of 15 items per second, by the way. In case I haven't made that clear, this is based off of uh, a yellow belt input, and what I have built out of the entire chain is based off of a yellow belt input of ore. So as we go along, bear that in mind, this is one yellow belt of ore in. So if you have more than one yellow belt of ore in, you'll have to do the math accordingly. Because it's not as simple as just doubling up of every machine on the line. Now, I have built this such that everything is being processed. So, I have likely not exactly the minimum across the board number of machines that I need. But I definitely have enough machines that I need to process everything to give you an idea of scale. So first off, jaw crushers, processing ore into processed iron and stone. So stone is your first byproduct that you have to deal with. So you're going to have to get rid of your stone somehow. You can do whatever you want to do with this stone. I suggest doing what you can to use the stone. And then if you back up on all of your sources that need stone... 
from this, you can void the stone. There are a couple of methods of voiding the stone. Uh, in the early game, you likely don't have access to burners yet, though that would be the suggested route. Uh, you will have to set up a titanium processing uh, setup to get some titanium plates in order to make the burners to void the stone. Uh, in the alternative, there is also the option of setting up a washer, which I have washers. You can also set up a washer making saline water out of stone. Uh, that is another option. Uh, and then what you can do, uh, because the washers, the washers use iron, stone, bricks, and circuit board ones in small parts, which you can make easily in the early game. Uh, you can handcraft the circuits out of wood and copper. You can make some stone bricks quite easily. You can get your pipes and your iron and your small parts. Small parts are just iron and copper. So you can make a washer and then you can make a sinkhole once you get some steel. And you can sinkhole the saline water. And that is another way of voiding your stone. Uh, and this processed iron can get you by as either the advanced foundry recipe or you also have the option of going molten. I would always suggest going molten uh, over the direct uh, plates method, which I have right over there. If I can move. All right, so right over here, we have the processing into plates. Now, this is a line of like 18 which is ginormous. So 15 per second makes 9 per second of the processed ore. All right, in order to process 9 per second, you need 18 advanced foundries to give you 9 iron plates per second. All right, well, what if I wanted to make that into molten instead? Well, you get 18 and a half-ish. It's not exactly 18.75. Uh, this mod, by the way, is the actual craft time mod. Now you can see with one of these casting units, you can get 17 and a half out of 12 and a half, but you've got like about 18. So if you do two casting units, you won't get 15 out, but you will get more than nine, uh, I believe. It should be more than nine. should be more than this so you do get an increase in the production there however in order to do this you need borax you need borax and you need sand castings borax sand castings and a fuel source for your basic oxygen furnaces uh, as well as oxygen in but oxygen you split water in, ele in an electrolyzer to get your oxygen, and you can vent excess hydrogen or use it to make power. So, that's what you can do early on at Red Science to get the most potential iron plates out. Is couple casting units, you'll get not quite a full yellow belt. If you really want to, you can add a second line of iron in if you want a full belt of iron out, a bit more than a full belt of iron out, actually. Um, so it's five additional boffs, basic oxygen furnaces, to get 12 and a half. Well, what's 12 and a half on the output here? Well, it's nine so yeah you're looking at a little bit less like if you did a full two belts that's 18 so if you want to do 18 that's 29 and then processing 36 would be a lot 
processing 36 would be over 20 per second. So just for reference, in, at the current state, that's what that looks like. Now, once you want to upgrade even further, say you've now hit green science and you're looking to massively increase the amount of iron that you have, specifically the amount of molten iron that you have, uh, because you are also, you are not only concerned about having enough molten to feed your plates, but you're also concerned at this phase in the game in having the molten steel to feed your steel in which molten steel is made out of molten iron. Molten steel is made directly out of molten iron, uh, in which 12 and a half, if you want to feed a single casting unit, you're going to need two of these, and that's 12 and a half of your molten iron. So, yeah, you're probably going to want to have a second line of iron in in the early game to also be able to feed even just three per second on your steel. So bear in mind when it comes to iron you also have to be concerned about steel. And then at green science you also have to be concerned about stainless steel uh, in order to progress to your blue science and your circuit twos. Now stainless steel of course uh, being quite annoying for some people. One of the many many reasons why people end up not continuing past circuit twos but uh, I forget actually what the building is that makes the molten stainless steel uh, I am using the mod what is it really used for to see that it oh it is in a foundry Actually, it is in a foundry where you can make molten stainless steel, if I can find this recipe. So, molten stainless steel will use molten steel, a lot of molten steel, to make just 25 units, which can feed two casting machines for two and a half units of stainless steel out. So, if you can feed just the one molten. It's going to need phosphate rocks, nickel, ferrochromium alloy, niobium sulfur, and copper. Now we'll talk a little bit later a little bit about the ferrochromium alloy. If you have molten iron and molten chromium, it is always better to do the molten recipe for ferrochromium alloy. You will have plenty to feed this. Plenty to feed this, but just know that you're going to need a lot of steel, which means that you're going to need a lot of molten iron. Now, how are you going to get a lot of molten iron to feed your stainless? Well, that's where the unslimed iron chain comes in. So this time, you're going to take your processed iron, convert it into grade 1, 2, and 3 iron, take your 3, make it into 2, take your 2 and make it into 1 plus gravel here's our next byproduct to deal with gravel by this point in the game you should absolutely have access to burners to burn the gravel or do whatever else you want with it uh, to get rid of it then you turn your grade one into dust and your dust into pulp one and slime you then take your slime and make it into unslimed iron and then your pulp one and make it also into unslimed iron at green science and then you can go and take all of your unslimed iron and make it into a lot more molten a lot more molten for a single yellow belt in significantly more molten for your single yellow belt in if you have two yellow belts in at this point in the game which i do suggest doing you will have plenty enough to feed two iron lines plus a steel line plus some super steel. So you'll have super steel, steel, and then two full belts of iron that you're capable of uh, at this point. Uh, and, and you can take your 
once you back up on your super steel, you can take the excess molten steel and make more steel out of it. Because you'll have way more than enough molten iron to cover two full yellow belts of output of the iron plates at that point. So, say you've actually gone through and gotten your circuit twos and gotten your blue science. At this point, you may want to consider going up to high grade iron. Now, I would not necessarily suggest doing so immediately as the cat joins me. Hi. Yes. Oh, you want you want lap time as I'm recording? He he wants he wants the lap time as I'm recording. Mwah. Go. Yes, go. So, once you do get to blue science, you may want to consider going up to high grade iron. I do not suggest doing this immediately. Uh due to some of the outside ingredients that are now necessary that you have to add to this. Um you're going to need to do a bit of prep work. Uh, in fact, it may actually be easier for you at this point not to focus on getting to high-grade iron as the first thing that you get high-grade from. Uh, but ultimately, it's up to you exactly what you want to upgrade when. You're probably going to want to upgrade everything to high-grade at some point. So let's just assume that you are ready to do this upgrade to uh, high-grade iron now. So when you start your transition, you're going to want to cut off your hydrocyclone, converting pulp into unslimed iron, and instead turn your pulp into concentrated iron, or iron concentrate. Now this does give a little bit of cold water slurry fuel as a byproduct, you can void this uh, as, well, also, what I haven't mentioned yet is that you do get tailings out in your unslimed iron here. You can do whatever you want to the tailings. There's lots of uses for it, including making Nexalit out of it, but I don't like... If you are backed up on your iron, then you won't have that byproduct of tailings anymore to make your Nexalit, and you risk then not having enough tailings to make enough nexlet and you choke on your nexlet because your iron's backed up. I don't like those types of situations. Therefore, I tend to void the tailings that are byproducts of any machines. Um, so similarly here, I would probably void this cold water slurry fuel. So this will make your concentrate. We'll get to what you do with the concentrate a little bit later. Now, the unslimed iron in a centrifugal pan can be converted into pulp 2, but pulp 2 will require two outside inputs, petroleum sulfonates and oleochemicals. Well, how are you going to get petroleum sulfonates and oleochemicals? You probably haven't seen a need for petroleum sulfonates yet, and the reason for that would be petroleum sulfonates are only used for this very specific step in this exact iron chain, in just this iron chain. So it's only used for this, right here, right now. That's your only reason to make petroleum sulfonates, uh, is for this chain. So because of that, I've marked it as iron only on the petroleum sulfonates, let's not look at this as an as a petroleum sulfonate ingredient input, but all of the ingredients used to make the petroleum sulfonate. In which case, it's sodium hydroxide, crude oil, sulfuric acid, and saline water. Okay. How are you going to get all of those? Well, I'm not going to focus too much on this because there are various ways of getting all of these ingredients. 
let's just say that I want to present a idea, an idea for you. So, let's begin with the sulfuric acid right here. So, there is this nice little chain that is coal bed gas that you will have access to by this point in the game. It is oxygen in and pressured water in. Wonderful. And it's actually a closed loop on the water system, so you don't need to worry about adding in new water. Uh, add hot air to coal bed gas and you can get acid gas as well as flu gas for extra ash or whatever you want to do with flu gas. And then you can convert that directly into sulfuric acid. This is water and energy in. Purely water and energy in. There is no outside non-renewable resource involved in doing this. So you can make as much sulfuric acid as you want without an iron input. Or just a straight up sulfur input. So this I consider free. Uh, by free I mean water and power or water and space ultimately. So there's your sulfuric acid taken care of right off the bat for any time you need sulfuric acid that you have as much as you could ever desire at all times of sulfuric acid. Now as for your saline and your crude and your sodium hydroxide. Well, sodium hydroxide you can make out of saline water, so let's instead focus more on the saline water aspect of this. So, the quenching tower has two recipes that are functionally identical except that instead of copper and iron, you can get one that's borax and niobium. I would not suggest using these recipes for the actual ore type. It doesn't really matter, the, uh, the ore type. What matters, though, is uh, tailings and saline and, well, technically also flue gas, but the tailings and the saline are what you're looking for here uh, out of the quenching tower uh, because the saline is used directly. You can use the saline to make the uh, sodium hydroxide, and you can use the tailings to make crude oil along with aromatics and water in a closed loop system and it gives you some ole some olefins it gives you some olefins as well so you have something else that's somewhat useful that you can use now how are you going to get this this tar that's needed for this well my solution to this is make lots of mushrooms convert it into coal Use the coal in the coal gas destructive distillation column recipe because it gives you a lot of tar as well as coal gas. And it gives you some coke that you can then make. Oh, and an iron oxide out that I guess if you're doing this for the iron uh, production line, you could make it into more iron. You could take your coke and also convert it into a little bit more coal gas and tar, or do whatever else you want. It's not like you get too much tar and coal gas out of this. Uh, so you can do that to get tar. It's a lot. It's huge when trying to do this at massive scale, but it is just water in for Fowgy for your mushrooms. Mushrooms are just water uh, on the most basic of recipes to get that. From here, we now have this. However, in order to get your coal gas, you also need aromatics. And that is where this recipe comes in for aromatics. This very, very, very nice recipe that converts mushrooms and flowers into aromatics. The flowers, the Relesia, is like hydrogen and soil. In. It's really simple. Hydrogen and soil to make flowers. So, again, we've got stuff that is basically splitting water to get hydrogen, as well as just power to get the soil for your Relesia. So, you have ultimately stuff that's coming from power and water 
in order to make your aromatics and in order to make your tar for your saline water, which is being used to also make a little bit of sodium hydroxide by splitting saline water. It'll also give you some chlorine and uh, hydrogen on top of everything else. Uh, and that's all the things that you need for your petroleum sulfonates. So, next up is the olefins. Now, there's only one recipe for olefins at, in the current state of the game. This may change, is most likely going to change, when Pi Alien Life is released. And you can look forward to additional tutorials once Pi Alien Life releases. But, for now, know that oleochemicals will give you some glycerol as a byproduct that you can use for other things as well. Uh, it has a closed loop water system available to it, uh, and it consumes lard and nichrome. Now, nichrome uh, means that you're going to need nickel and chromium. So, bear that in mind, this will consume your nichrome, which at this point in the game, unless you have already set up a molten chromium with a molten nickel, you're probably not going to have a lot of nichrome available to you. So I would suggest probably doing that first. Get at minimum up to a version of molten chromium and a version of molten nickel before going over and doing your molten iron. Just because of the oleochemical requirements in this. Uh, lard is pretty sustainable as well. This is uh, through cows. Alien cows give you give you lard, and they they feed on things. Yes, things that uh, I don't remember off the top of my head right now. There are various recipes, actually, to feed uh, those things. These things, muckmo or muckmox. These guys to give you lard. You have Falgi and Relesia seeds. Ash and salt with Falgi and Relesia seeds. Raw fiber or fiber and ash. Uh, the best recipe is the ash and salt. Uh, as I've mentioned, saline water can be gained sustainably through the power of a lot of mushrooms. Uh, and tars to get you some saline water. Uh, saline transfers into salt at a 10 to 1 ratio. So think of it like that. And this will give you plenty, plenty of lard for relatively minimal amounts of salt, as well as relatively minimal amounts of ash. Bear in mind, again, this recipe does give you flue gas as well. That you can make into ash if you really wanted to use filtration media in that way. Um, so those are the the two primary things between oleochemicals and petroleum sulfonates that you will need for the pulp two. That was just pulp two. Going on to pulp three, the next new thing is xylenol. Now, xylenol is only done through, or is only used in the iron chain, the nickel chain, and the rock hole chain, and that is it. That is its only uses in the game is as an ingredient on these further processing recipes of iron, nickel, and raw coal, which you may be wondering, well, what the heck is raw coal? Uh, because it's not actually necessary. In fact, coal in and of itself is unnecessary because of this mushrooms to coal. Now, Pyadaw did mention that this might change uh, with alien life, but this is probably going to change with alien life. Some other forms of biotic material will go into coal, but we shall see what those changes will bring about when they come about. So, xylenol, there are a couple methods of getting xylenol but the reason why i have these two here is because at blue science when you get access to the high grade iron process you're only going to have access really uh, to this as the quote best recipe 
for xylenol. Because the alternative mess recipe over here in the mixer that uses aromatics and benzene, you can't make until utility science, sadly. So lots of methods of getting xylenol, many of which involve processing various oil uh, products. This is the one I would suggest, is tar into xylenol, because it's able to be gained infinitely through mushrooms. Um, and you don't have to worry about running low on any other fluid or anything like that, or anything of the sort. Uh, the iron oxide and phenol and methanol, I've looked at, it's a larger footprint even than the tar. And then, of course, benzene and aromatics, I think, is one of the better options than tar because instead of needing to process a whole bunch of coal into tar, you can instead take mushrooms directly. You can take mushrooms directly uh, along with flowers to make into aromatics. And, and you can make benzene plus a little bit more aromatics through coal water slurry fuel, which, by the way, is also a byproduct of the chain itself. It needs a little bit more, though, than the byproduct, so you have to add at least a little bit more. This is just tailings in. So coal water slurry fuel is just tailings in. And how are you going to get the tailings? There are many, 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 many ways of getting the tailings. You should have enough tailings simply as byproducts across the board of all different things, not just the iron chain, to be able to feed coal water slurry fuel. Chances are you're already making coal water slurry fuel for benzene. That you're probably already doing this at this point in the game uh, as part of your phenol production, actually. Uh, because at least I am doing phenol via cumene. And cumene involves benzene. Uh, and I believe it is in an FTS... Is it FTS or FB? I always forget. Uh, so an FTS. No, it's an FB. It's in the FB reactor, which is here. No, that's a pulp mill. Here, that's the FB reactor. Making cumene from ceramics, phosphoric acid, and propane and benzene. So there is a chance that you're making phenol out of this line. Uh, granted, there is the whole coal infiltration media, but it's questionable whether or not that's actually relatively good to use due to space requirements and stuff like that. I mean, this does use phosphoric acid, which has really low outputs for a really long time and is needed for a lot of things. So maybe you're not doing this already, but I know that I did in my playthrough when I decided to set up phenol, I chose this route. Uh, so you might already have your cold water slurry filled by now. Okay, moving on. Organic solvent. Now, I haven't put anything out for the organic solvent. Uh, that's an input. The pressured air is pressured air is just a pump to give you pressured air, so we're not going to really talk too much about that. The organic solvent. Chances are you've already gotten production of organic solvent already set up somewhere. My suggestion is, of course, going to be the bone meal and olefins. 
A, because you're getting olefins if you're doing this crude oil recipe to give yourself infinite amounts of crude oil without having to worry about any pump jacks wearing thin over time. And you have complete control over your output this way. Um, so, yeah, I would, I would do it that way. And then the bone meal comes from horses. You convert your horses into bone meal. Where are the horses? That is a good question. They are Ulrichs. The Ulrich Corrals are... Where are they again? Ulrich. Ulrich. Corrals. These guys make bone meal out of flowers, flowers and salt. I think it's the one of the best, but the the best is fiber, flowers, and ash. It depends on how you're getting the fibers as to whether or not this is worth it. That would be a rather large footprint. Uh, but the ash I consider free. I would say either do the salt and Relesia or the fiber ash and Relesia uh, on your bone meal and there you go there is also a recipe for olefins directly out of aromatics uh, that you have access to by this phase in the game in an olefin plant, aromatics directly to olefins, therefore mushrooms and flowers directly to olefins. Uh, so there's your infinite amounts of organic solvent, basically, at that point. Um, five is just water in and pressured air. Six is sulfuric acid in pressured air. Now, of course, I mentioned do this for sulfuric acid out of coal bed gas get all your sulfuric acid and that's pretty much it the last thing the last two things here on the high grade chain are armac 12 armac 12 so uh, i have conveniently if you haven't noticed already ha placed for high grade you're going to need xylenol organic solvent sulfuric acid armac 12 petroleum sulfonates oleochemicals infiltration media uh, I probably should add, like, salt water and crude oil and sodium hydroxide, the stuff that makes the sulfonates, but eh. Well, we'll leave it at this. These are what are used directly, rather than the stuff to make the stuff. So, Armac 12 is only used in the iron and in excellent chains, and that is it. That is all they're used for, uh, as an ingredient during the chains for iron and nexalit. This stuff will require lead plates, ammonia, and oleochemicals. Now, I've already talked a little bit about the oleochemicals, so just make a little bit more to feed your Armac 12. Uh, the lead is really small amounts of lead that you need for this, so it's just throw a tiny little bit of lead at it. And then the ammonia... Uh, you can make ammonia directly from urea uh, by this point in the game. Um, there is There are a lot of options to get ammonia, uh, but the ammonia from urea is probably the most convenient for you uh, at this point. Uh, there is always, of course, the option of the cyanic and ammonia, or the tholin-based ammonia, but I would say the easiest is likely... Urea ammonia, because urea is aug paddocks who feed off of mushrooms and fibers and such and so on. Uh, the ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen um, would very much depend on how you're getting your nitrogen um, because there's not that great of ways of getting nitrogen sustainably unless you've managed to set up for example full ground boring at this point of zinc uh, for your filtration media 
um, because the, the issue with nitrogen is that it does take filtration media, and filtration media is not, rel is not that easy to get sustainably. It's, you should have it by now, but is it worth spending it on more nitrogen to get ammonia when you have the option of doing the urea? Uh, and I would say just do the urea-based ammonia. Speaking of filtration media, that's what's going to be involved in our final step to actually get to high-grade iron. It's really, really low amounts, so you don't have to worry so much about filtration media. Uh, it's minuscule amounts of filtration media for this step, but I should at least discuss how it is made. So filtration media is made out of gravel, pure sand, activated carbon, and glass. So glass you should have. Gravel at this point in the game you can make from sand extractors. You can crush stone to get gravel, uh, which you'd also get through sand extractors. Um, so you can spend a little bit of iron here to get filtration media through getting gravel directly and through getting sand, obviously sand extractors, that you can then make into pure sand. The activated carbon though, you can get your coke through uh, actual coke processing from coal based off of mushrooms. Uh, so you can make lots of, lots of coal uh, from mushrooms. You can make lots of coke out of that coal doing the uh, basic oxygen furnace and quenching tower red hot coke chain to get coke out of coal. Uh, and then you have to add zinc chloride to get activated carbon from coke. Zinc chloride, sodium hydroxide, and nitrogen uh, here, um, which zinc chloride is the only one that's like questionable at this point in the game on its sustainability uh, because chances are you're probably still just mining zinc ore. Um, my suggestion, of course, is to transition into ground boring or do this as part of your transition to ground boring if you want to not have to move your ore patch uh, mining around all the time. If you're fine with that, then sure. If you're fine with just ore mining or you've set your ore densities to obscene numbers, uh, go ahead, keep mining the zinc, use it here, make your zinc chloride. I've shown you ways of getting the salt water, the saline water, to use to make your sodium hydroxide and your chlorine uh, that are involved in this, uh, and I've just sort of put what you can do to get some nitrogen uh, to help feed this activated carbon. And then glass is glass, and we will cover that in another tutorial video. So there's your high grade. Congratulations. That is the hard part uh, of the vast majority of the ore chains. Uh, the complexity of all of the ore processing chains happens at high grade. After high grade, things get a lot, 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 lot simpler. They get a lot simpler. Just for reference here, processing high grade, yeah, it's going to get you a lot more molten. A lot more molten over the previous step. Um, a lot more molten over the previous step. Not quite a 2x, I think, but it is a massive improvement for what's ultimately power and water. And that's it. Uh, yeah, uh, power and water. I'll, just, I'll leave it at that. Power and water is what it all comes from. Uh, then again, that is my philosophy in Pinedons. That is that is what I have determined after all of my uh, time playing Pinedons mods thus far and reviewing all of the various uh, production chains and all of that is that this ultimately stems everything 
save for one item chain in the game. Everything can ultimately be sourced back to water and power. Which power can be gained from water. So ultimately the only resources for everything that you need except for that one particular chain is space and water. Water and space. You can get everything with sufficient amounts of water and space. Except for rare earth ore and the rare earth oxide chain. That is the only thing that at uh, this point in time, this recording, you cannot get sustainably through water and space. Uh, in case you were not aware of that fact. Um, now, all of the steps in between, <laughs> that we will cover in other videos. Uh, and I have alluded to a lot of that, and I have explained some of that today through mushrooms into tar. Now, this is the really, really, really big one. This is the really, 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 really big one. Uh, the most important one, in fact, is this concept of making mushrooms into coal and using the coal to make lots of other things. Um, or using biotic material to make very, very important things that are used for a lot of other things. Uh, and, like, this is the base. So, once you get this base and understand this base, this is something you will do a lot of. Uh, and for reference, I will mention right now for reference... 160 Fawagi farms feeding into high pressure furnaces to make coal will output a total of four yellow belts of coal that you can then convert into whatever else you might want to convert. Uh, in this case, if you want to turn it into tar, it makes over 300 units per second of tar. Uh, about 320-ish per second of tar, and you'll end up with a, with a bit more than that in coal gas that you have to deal with, get rid of in some way, shape, or form. Uh, or you can make like four yellow belts of coke out of that coal, as well as coal dust as a byproduct by doing the red-hot coal route, and you can use all of that coke to burn hydrogen from water electrolysis to make a lot of power. A lot of power. At Mark II items, we're talking 1.2 gigawatts of power per 160 Falgi farms, some saltwater electrolyzers, and Mark II turbines in the end. So, yeah, it's... It's very versatile, these mods, this mod set. So, anyway. Moving on to the utility science step. So we've talked a lot about high grade. Took a lot of time going over high grade because high grade is a very complex process and will be a very complex process throughout these tutorials. The next step at utility science is the same across the board for every ore type that has reduction and sintering uh, processes after high grade. So at Utility Science, you have reached the end game. Congratulations. This is now really simple to do. It is a really, really easy thing to do. Because chances are you have most of this stuff already. Uh, now, what I haven't set up actually is a diesel. So, for reduction, taking your high grade and making reduced iron, you're going to need pressured air, as well as sodium sulfate, and diesel. Diesel, my suggestion, of course, is going to be the Nexalit and Olefin's recipe uh, to get diesel, because Nexalit is made sustainably 
through tailings, and as I have mentioned, olefins from aromatics from mushrooms and flowers yeah, is the best way. So you have as much diesel as you could ever desire. Sustainably obtained diesel. Uh, note that diesel also has a fuel value of 1.5 megajoules, which makes it quite nifty to use in uh, the oil burner Mark 1s to do steam and steam power uh, out of that. So if you ever wanted 165 degree C steam to use for any processes that need a steam input or say you wanted to make power sustainably through that method instead, uh, you could use this recipe uh, for diesel and burn diesel uh, to make your power. Uh, it seems like a really, really good option. And this is actually just off the cuff, off the top of my head right now, an idea I just had that you can actually use this diesel to f make pretty good amounts of power for a relatively good amount, like, relatively good uh, space footprint. Because ultimately, remember, everything comes to space and water, so... And in which water is infinite, and so is space. So, yeah, in terms of how you use your space, it doesn't really matter. So this is just another option for you. Uh, and then the sodium sulfate. Two methods of getting sodium sulfate. One is through sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. The other is from sodium bisulfate and salt. And it gives you some sodium chloride. Uh, in which so sodium bisulfate comes from salt and sulfuric acid. So you have the option of using salt and sulfuric acid or sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. Now I will note sodium hydroxide through the normal recipe requires the normal recipe requires 50 units of saline per sodium hydroxide, and you need 10 units of sodium hydroxide, so you're talking 500 units of saline in total for the sodium hydroxide requirement versus a lot less than that overall if you do the salt. It's like 150 units of saline per sodium sulfate in total uh, from the salt requirements. So I would say get and use salt instead of instead of this recipe the only savings this ultimately has is sulfuric acid and i've already mentioned just how easy it is to do sulfuric acid infinitely however much you want or could ever desire um can be obtained through coal bed gas and oxygen and hot air so that much is fine so sodium sulfate in to here, along with the high-grade iron and the diesel and the pressured air, and there you go. From here, you could make molten out of reduced. Uh, it's 200 molten per unit of reduced. It is a one-to-one -one on high-grade to reduced, and that is... We look at 1.38 and compare. That is about 70 more units of molten that you gain out of that. But you immediately have access to sintering as well. Uh, there's no real point doing high grade sintering directly. Always, always do reduced sintering. Reduced into sintering. So. The reason why this is important is because reduced doubles in centered. So you get twice the output that you put in from reduced to centered. It is going to use, though, 
a not insignificant amount of lime. Now, I have also already mentioned... Uh, remember this again. Rem remember, remember our coal from mushrooms and how I mentioned you can make a lot of coke from this? Well, coke directly feeds into lime production, uh, which makes things significantly easier for this. So you have the ability to get as much lime as you could ever desire out of water, pretty much. That Yeah, because limestone comes from water in a soil extractor, uh, and then you can make lime out of limestone and coke, which you can get your coke out of coal out of mushrooms. Just a thought there. And then, of course, actually converting your centered into some glorious, glorious molten. Uh, this recipe is one centered to 150 molten, but consider that you get 2x the centered for each unit of reduced. So instead of one reduced to 200 molten, it's two centered to 300 molten versus one high grade to 150. So... That's every four seconds, right? Yeah, so you have now doubled your high grade output. That uh, that would be what I would like to refer to as double the efficiency. 2x improvement over high grade. So you're gonna have a lot of molten iron for even a single yellow belt of input and remember i have placed these buildings so that i have enough to process a single yellow belt input not a red belt not two yellow belts which is the same as a red not a blue belt one yellow belt input now I will end off the day by discussing what do you use the molten for exactly. Well, what can you do with molten? And by the way, in order to do the centering, you need uh, lime, you need syngas, lime and syngas, and pressured air. That's, that's what you need on the centering, and you need a fuel source. A fuel. That's that's what this is, by the way. This is just Mark V fuel rods. Just for fun, putting in Mark V fuel rods to fuel this. Uh, but any any fuel in. So for centering, in total, these are the things that you need. And this will not change. This process will not change uh, going to any other process that has centering so since we've covered it here just fair warning i will mostly skim over this in the other videos and probably refer you back here so centering is this across the board it'll be high grade in to reduced to centered and it'll give you lots out now what do you use molten for well you can make iron plates directly all the iron plates you can make out of your output from here you can make as many as you want however i would not suggest making as many as you want because you're also going to be needing molten steel molten steel is in a basic oxygen furnace as we saw previously uses a lot of coke for reference uh you need to feed coke into this directly Unlike these recipes making molten iron, this needs coke as an input to make your steel from your iron. And you're going to need a lot of steel, a lot of molten steel, to feed the molten stainless steel, along with a whole bunch of other stuff that we will cover later. And then, of course, beyond the, mol beyond the stainless steel production, which is going to need aramid, 
you're going to need to think about also the Molten Super Steel and having enough Molten Stainless Steel to feed your Molten Super Steel to get 1.25 per second out of your Molten Super Steel. So you can see how this all starts to add up here. You can see how this all starts to really add up. Um, so if you're Molten Super Steel to do a single cast, or two casting units, shall we say. One machine making Molten Super Steel a Mark 1 machine, by the way. By this point, you probably have access to Mark 2 or 3 uh, when you need the Molten Super Steel. And are probably thinking about that upgrade to 4 soon. But anyway, the 25 needs 25. Well, that's the same as what one of these produces. So if you need one for your stainless steel as well, that means two. That means 100 units of steel per second, molten steel. And if you want a red belt of steel, you're, or at least close to it, you're going to want to have more than 50. Let's just, for reference sake, say 50 steel here. 100 steel here, 150 steel in total, which is 30 per second on coke. That's not actually all that bad uh, for reference. <laughs> just, just for reference, that's like 80 mushroom farms. But yeah, that's, that's like half of uh, one of my coke setups. Uh, so that's 150 molten iron. So, yeah. 150 molten iron. And you can use the rest for your ungodly amounts of actual iron plates. For all of the rest of your iron plates. So, doable at this level, but if you're looking at the numbers from back at high grade before doing that jump, it's like, well... Back at high grade before doing that jump, uh, that is a lot. That is a lot. That is, that is a lot and doesn't leave you with a ton left over for your actual iron. But it's doable. I will throw that out there, it's doable. Now there's two more things, two more alloys. To talk about. One is ferrochromium alloy, as I mentioned before, because it sort of gets used as well in this process. Um, so, molten iron, molten chromium make all the ferrochromium alloy you could ever imagine. This is a relatively small amount of molten iron to give you a lot of output on the ferrochromium alloy. Uh, you're going to need ferrochromium alloy in your circuit 2 chain. So, chances are you might or might not have Molten Chromium yet. I think you can get some at Green Science to, and start doing this recipe. I highly suggest doing this recipe over the, uh, over the plates recipe to get the uh, Ferrochromium Alloy because this is a far more efficient method of uh, obtaining it. And then, of course, there is the Niobium Iron Alloy, which doesn't get used for a lot. But it is something to also bear in mind if I doubt you'd ever need a full yellow belt out of this. So just note Niobium Complex and Molten Iron here at, in with the current numbers uh, at this point in time. So with that... That is the Iron Chain. Oh boy. After all of that long time, that hour, over an hour of discussion, that's your Iron Chain. So, just remember, we've got ore to processed, to grade 1, 2, and 3, to 3 to 2, 2 to 1, 1 to dust, dust to pulp 1 and slime, Pulp 1 to concentrate, slimed to unslimed, unslimed to pulp 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6, 6 to 7, and 2, which feeds back. Concentrate to dust, concentrate, and dust, which feeds back. Dust concentrate to pulp 7, pulp 7 to high grade, high grade to reduced, 
reduced, disintered. That is your iron chain, and these are the various buildings that will be involved in this. I will also make one last note. Hydro cyclones require niobium. So before you can do unslimed iron uh, with and use your pulp one, you will need to do your niobium chain. That is a very important step that you'll need to do uh, before you can make full use of the unslimed iron processing. So, if you have enjoyed this video, this tutorial and slash overview of the iron ore processing chain in Pyanodon's mods, do not forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to help this series rank higher in the YouTube search results. You can also give me a follow on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash otaku showboat, and turn on notifications to be reminded when I go live, which at the, this point in time of recording is Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays from 10 a.m. to approximately 1 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, where we are playing a complete playthrough of Pyandons and are currently past Circuit 2's working... Like, we've gotten all of the blue science text that I'm currently interested in getting, and am currently working towards getting everything from nothing. That is, that is the theme going forward. Everything from nothing. A.K.A. water in space. That is... That is the theme going forward. We will be doing lots of ground boring uh, as the current project, uh, in particular getting drilling fluid 2 set up at scale, which means getting collagen at scale. We're going to have some fun when doing that tutorial series, I think, uh, unless the numbers significantly change, because that's going to be like a whoa moment um, when looking at that. Uh, so, you can also find me on Twitter, at Otaku Showboat, as well as visit my website at otakushowboat.com, where I will be posting the text versions of the tutorials. This is more of a companion video series that will include the information in the written tutorials, uh, slash vice versa. Uh, you may find it handier to read the written tutorials, uh as well as watch and see what this all looks like here in the video. Our next tutorial, uh, or at least the next tutorial that I will be recording, will be going over the copper chain. And then after that will be the glass chain. But after that, I am uncertain as to the exact order because after that we'll, I will need to cover borax processing as well as tin, as well as lead, as well as titanium, as well as aluminium, as well as chromium. <laughs> uh, because they all sort of happen around the same time, I think borax will be more important because borax is involved in molten casting across the board, um, so borax is rather important. Uh, to do. It is, an, it is a mineable ore type and therefore has a chain associated with it that will be a relatively short tutorial video uh, going into what you need to make borax as well. I will also do like the dye boring, uh, boric acid, boron trioxide, boron, like the whole thing, everything you can do with, with uh, your boron. Uh, your borax, excuse me, uh, at some point in that future. So all of that you have to look forward to, as well as eventually science chains, circuit chains, etc. And be sure to comment below what tutorials you are interested in seeing. Please let me know what other tutorials you want to see if you want to see anything outside of the ore chains, the science chains, and the circuit chains. If there's anything else you want to like see visualized in a video tutorial like this, let me know in the comments. 
and I hope to see you all in the copper tutorial video.